Hey guys, Lindsay Bell here. We're back. I'm picking up where we left off in the last episode because I'm not really sure if it's gonna continue from what happened last time when we went freaking crazy, but we'll see. Um, All of his co workers were maybe. gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm. So far, nothing's looking different. Okay, both doors are here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I'm gonna do this this time. I'm gonna do it like this. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Okay, it's stuck on the wall. There is that fucking line. I hate you! I don't know if it's gonna. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had <laughs> never known before. Oh my god. Was it this room? A connection between the two? Could a man love a room? I mean, truly, truly, deeply, madly love. Maybe. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Um, I'm gonna go straight and see what happens. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Um, I'm just gonna see if something, like, actually happens. I don't think anything will, but... Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but it, like, freaked out when I walked in here. Close the door. You want to say something to me? There was nothing here. No choice okay. to make, no path to follow. Wait! Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Are he, is that is he saying that is, is that different? Let's see. Did that move? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom nope. closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. Okay, it is As the it same. Is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet FA. Hey dummy, I'm out. Old. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I can't remember if I went downstairs. I'm going downstairs. No, I did go downstairs. I'm still gonna go downstairs. I didn't mean to do like that. You think I'm here? Hello. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, oh, Stanley I guess I should have been himself. walking. This is all uh. too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually This is gone. new. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying. And began to gently float above the Whoa, ground. I am. Then he imagined himself soaring through Whee! space on a magical star field, <gasps> and it too appeared. Oh my God! It was so much fun, Whee! and Stanley marvelled that he had still not woken up. This is fun. How was he remaining so lucid? Ah! 
And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... That's a scary thought. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. That's a lie. And actually, I hadn't gone downstairs yet. I thought I did, but... I think I started to and then I stopped at one point. Stanley began screaming. Oh God. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Boom! And I ran into a wall. <laughs> that was weird. This is the story of what? a woman named Mariella. Hi, Mariella. Pretty name. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. Uh. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. <laughs> I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> she said, bitch, I ain't got time for this. <laughs> that was so weird. Oh my god. <laughs> it's different again. What the fuck? Okay, let's go. What the hell? I don't know where to go now. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't know if there's any more endings that way. Hmm. I wonder if... <sighs> this was not the correct way look. to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. <sighs> oh, I ran into a door in a walk. The lounge was grand, majestic, perhaps too majestic. 
like a combination of a much smaller version and a much larger version of this exact room. It all made Stanley uncomfortable, and he started to bleed a little. This made him smile. Mm. At last, proof that he was human. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I'm gonna go straight your fast. Actually, no. Uh, uh, I kind of want to go back downstairs. Okay, I'm gonna see something. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on. Oh, um, I don't know if anything different will happen down here, but I'm about to find out. We're, well, we're gonna find out, really. It's the same. <laughs> Okay. Um Let's see what happens. Stanley if knew there's the office something... layout like the back of his hand. It was uh, only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. This time I'm gonna go like the normal way you go, like you go to the um left and see if there is something different when over Stanley there. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's off. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's okay. office. I'm just gonna see if there's like anything different up here. Maybe? I don't know. Okay, that door's closed. I don't know. Stepping into his manager's this is office, expiration time Stanley for us. was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two eight four five but of course stanley couldn't possibly have known this stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination if he knew that the combo was two eight four five it would be another story entirely but no no this is what he was going to do instead <laughs> I'm just fucking around, sorry guys. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Okay. I'm not really sure if anything will be different. I mean, I'm really, I'm not sure at all. We're just gonna see. Oh my. And I. Wow, just pull a hair off of me and it's like red. What the hell? I have brown hair, not red hair. <laughs> oh lord. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Okay, um, I guess we'll try Stanley to go walked straight ahead through the large door of the again. red mind control facility. All right, nothing really different happened. So, um, right now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this here, and um. I'm going to take a little bit of a break since I did, I am recording this after the um, last one I just did, which is really, really long. So I'm going to go ahead, take a little bit of a break, and I will come back to this. So for now, guys, bye.